Hey, y'all, it's Monday. It should be a rather cra crazy and hectic week. Um, Saturday is Indrima's album release show. Um, unless um, something changed, uh, the album is released nationally in record stores tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Nick is in town today, so for a couple days, so we'll be rehearsing uh, for the show. A lot of business to catch up on. Um, so it's going to be a hectic week, and um, looking forward to everything. Looking forward to everything. Um, recap of yesterday, right quick. Um, just woke up, but uh, I'm going to go with this because I got a lot to do today. Of uh, the, the conduits video shoot went really well. Um, any of you folks that have done video shoots, depending on what the um, what the uh, premise of it was, is you do a lot of waiting until it's time for you to do what it is you have to do, but you have to be ready. And um, we had a we had some extras yesterday, not a large amount. They wanted a larger amount that we got, but uh, it was out in the country. It was out on a uh, a horse ranch, beautiful country. Looking forward to the video. It could be good. This video could, I shouldn't say could, but it's in the editing. See, that's one thing I've learned from Nick, being a film director. You know, um, good editing can make something good out of crap. I mean, it really can. I mean, just the worst and just whatever footage, if you edit it right, you can make a masterpiece. So, Lots of good footage was shot yesterday, so it's down to the, the editing, and I have never worked with uh, Josh, this particular um, photographer, um, videographer before. Really enjoyed the um, experience. Um, uh, the band asked me to not define my role. You know, I've already said what it is I think I'm doing, but, you know, they rather would leave it up to the people's imagination. I understand that. So... It was a lot of fun. I mean, it was a long day, and when it was when it, when I was done, I I left. I didn't stay till they were done because I was tired. I mean, it was after dark, you know. Um. Um. The the, the idea is to try to hurry up and wrap the video and have it ready to go and on on the internet when uh, Conduits hits uh, Europe next week. Chances are the video will probably go up sometime next week or the week after. That's just the way post-production goes. It's, you know, or maybe you don't. But I think so, many of you do know, you know. Okay, De Derek, think about what you're saying. <laughs> okay, it was just really, really neat. I like, I love Jenna, the lead singer of um, Conduits. Like I said, we became real close uh, while touring in Sun Ambulance. I was familiar with her before that. But um, there's a part, there's a there's a dormant Susie in her that is emerging in that she is a strong woman, but she has received such a traditional, uh, I will call it, traditional male um, message about what her strengths are, which is just her beauty, but she's smart. I enjoyed watching her direct the video as much as the director did. I enjoyed watching her assert her vision by changing some of the shots because they had, you have your shot sheet. You have, you plan everything out or else it's chaos, okay? And she added a few shots, which meant that we lost light. We were shooting. There's going to be a couple scenes where we were out of light and we shot anyway and it involved lighting some torches so it may be usable but that happened mainly because jenna had a couple of last minute ideas that she um really wanted to see and the thing about a good creative um team is that people check their egos enough to allow for the flow of ideas and i liked how josh the, the um director handle it which is okay we'll do we'll do that we'll do this as well because this is on this sheet this is what we had planned and we already know we want to see this we'll do yours as well and they work really well together um, I'm gonna go for this on this I have several things I want to talk about and uh, we'll see what I can remember 
Um, the other thing that I liked about working on this video is that when you work in film and video and entertainment, you work with a lot of people who are openly gay and then people who are just comfortable with just being. <clears throat> and I was really, really knocked out and inspired by a big group of the kids that I worked with yesterday. They're kids. They're in their early 20s. And what I liked about their demeanor was that sexuality did not matter. And they just played with it, even in their conversation. Like, you know, many of the guys, it's like you would not, you don't, from my perspective as a, you know, I'm an apparent to them. I'm, you know, I'm saying these kids are the same age as the kids that I raised. And so you see the guys and they just look like regular guys, you know, like just regular, you know, and then, but then you watch them and then they're, there's this, there's this subtle intimacy and just comfort and playfulness, which I really liked. The playfulness with um, uh, gender roles and just comfort levels with how people were. On Facebook, if you're interested, I put up a um, photo book of some of my pictures of the kind of its photo shoot, and you'll see what I mean. And in some of the pictures, the guys are just hamming it up for the camera in a real uh, poncy way, just to do it. And that I ended up talking to one Joe Joel. He's this big six foot six uh, um, tranny, I guess he is, you know. Um, but he inspires me, and I told him, young man, you inspire me because you appear to be so comfortable with what you exactly are, which I've always wanted to do. Not that I would be a tranny or a drag queen. But when I was, you know, wanting to um, understand who I was better, there was a lot of, you know, don't be what you are. Oh, God forbid, don't be that, you know. So suppressed it, you know. And then he gets to talking and talks about how he comes from a Southern Baptist um, background, too, and a lot of rejection, which just made him stronger. And I just thought all the more, um, yeah, I, that I admire that. I know I'm not talking about music, but you, my... M you people that are with me, you're with me. I wanted to, I want to talk about that for a second, but not yet. So I'm enthused. Also, I think many of you are going to enjoy watching me in the video because I act. And, um, you know, I have to make all these weird faces and act like, um, well, you'll see. It's like I'm possessed or something. And um, it's one of those things where if it, if by chance this could make me famous or lead to other work, it could be like one of those things where it's your Achilles heel, where you'll meet fans and they'll, they'll say, pull that face for me. And it's like, no, I'll tell you right away. That ain't happening, you know, because I already know about that. You know, you hate your, you hate your audience when they demand you to be a clown for them just because, you know what I'm saying? Even though through your support at buying our, what we make, you don't own us. You know, we, we, we still have the right to be individuals and not be clowns on a string. And I know that I can be very entertaining. I can be very clownish too, but I do it when I want to, you know, it was a lot of fun. With that in mind, you know, um, I know that here on the uh, internet, on the, on the channel that I vibe better with some people than others, and that over the years of being on here that I have lost some people who were with me originally, who are probably, have probably decided that my style is not for them. And that's fine, because I'm down with the freaks, you know, and that's, I mean, I'm really proud to not be kind of normal and almost mainstream straight. Um, uh... I don't want my words to be a put down. I just want to just demarcate my position is that I am definitely more interested and have always been drawn to crazy people, artists, people who are interesting, think outside the box, nonconformist. I know how to wear the mask and wear the uniform, but I ain't into it at all. So, um... If any of you folks that I'm talking about happen to watch this, you know who I'm talking about. I got a lot of love for you, but but um, 
things are the way they are and the way they need to be, you know. I make no apologies for who I am, but I do understand that the way that I am definitely rubs some people the wrong way and many others I vibe with and we um, we encourage each other. I encourage everyone, but I'm definitely down with the freaks. Now let me clarify, I'm not talking about freak in the sense that it's um, self-destructive or harmful to others, but real self-expression, freedom to people who feel free to express the true their true soul or what they see as their true nature. I admire that and I support it and I encourage it. And I am, I do, uh, I am down on conformity. And I could talk for days about it because conformity does not necessarily lead to order. There's a component to it that does, but there's also a large component to it that is, is highly destructive of the individual. And, and I think that in many ways we suffer the consequences of that as much as we suffer from uh, consequences of people who wish to be anarchic. So I hope that um, what I'm saying makes sense. I'm just kind of saying, yeah. Let your freak flag fly high. Uh, um, Straight-laced conformity sucks. Not much good has come from it, in my opinion. It's just my opinion. Okay, what else? watched just a couple of videos last night because I was on such a natural high of doing the video and also the uh, accompanying attention that comes with it. Um, but I did watch a couple of videos and one of the people that I watched was Zeke. You know, n nice to see you back, Zeke. Now, when you had kind of a falling out about Facebook, I didn't watch your videos. I just decided to disconnect. So I don't know what you said, okay? I just know that I'm glad you're back, okay? And I don't know that maybe I'm one of the people that rubs you the wrong way. It's, that's, you know, it's nothing, it's nothing intentional. <laughs> I'm just being me. But he showed a passel of records, just a shitload. And I started to do the vibe thing where I was going to try to pull what you showed that I have. And then it got to a point where it's like, oh man, those are all in the closet because a lot of my, what I consider classic rock or stuff that is just, you know, it's in the closet. And so he bought a bunch of wonderful records. I, I, when you got to the free jazz, I could have pulled that, but I said, okay, I'll just pull a few and then we'll talk. And I'll just say the main thing I want to do is glad to see you back, Zach. You know what I'm saying? And, um, just glad to see you back, man. You know, I do get a sense that I am one of the people that that you misread or I mess with your head a little bit, you know. And <laughs> I don't, I don't know what to say. I'm just being me, man. I dig you, you know. But these are the records that I pulled of the ones that you showed that we have in common: Caravan and the New Symphonia. I haven't played this much, but this is the, my first. No, this is the second album by Caravan I ever owned was Waterloo Lily. And this is a French version on the Kingdom label, which is uh, not, I I like this label. You don't see it too often. Is, is it on there? I thought you could see the label. There it is. Yeah, Kingdom. More jazzy. This is one of the more jazzy Caravan albums. This is really good, though. I highly recommend it. And then that newer caravan, uh, I don't have that one with the black cover. Good on you, man. He showed Kevin Coyne, Marjorie Razorblade. Uh, this can be hard to find. It's hard to listen to, too. <laughs> but uh, it's definitely, um, you know, I've got about three or four of his albums, and they're all keepers. You know, he's a neat guy. And, yeah, he also started out, did you mention this? I don't remember. He was on in the band Siren on er Electra, early Electra. Showed pearls before swine. I love this guy. And I love his lisp. I think <laughs> the fact that he has a lisp somehow uh, fits the songs. These things too. I love this guy. I was just listening to pearls before swine the last few days. You didn't show this one, but I wanted to show this Krabby Appleton album, uh, Return Rotten to the Core, also to make another personal uh, 
um, connection. The, the main guy in the middle, Michael Fennelly, is a, is a, he's a Facebook friend, but he's a friend, okay? Um, Jeff Recordman, 1958, uh, a while back, pointed out to me that he had befriended uh, Michael Fennelly, and every now and then they'd have an exchange. But Michael um, talks to me, you know, uh, uh, almost weekly. And uh, these are one of those little things that, as a little boy, um, entranced with the uh, magic of rock and roll, it was one of those things that I always dreamt of and wanted was direct connections to the artists that I love. And Krabby Appleton was one. Go Back was a fantastic song. I'll never forget Krabby Appleton doing it on American Bandstand and how cool Michael and the band looked. Michael was very cool. Should have been a bigger star, in my opinion. I think that he was real hit and miss with his material afterwards, and I think that's part of it. He could have been a, a pop, pop uh, star, but the material was... Um, and Michael, I, I, I think I know you watch my channel sometimes, too. And I don't mind saying, and, you know, you can talk to me on Facebook about it, but it seems like you're working with people, and it's like you try this direction, then you try that. And it was too diffuse. There'd be good songs, but it's like trying, it's like trying different things to make something work. That's frustrating, you know. I think that that's, that's what it appears to me, and that's one thing that I am not intending to do with Indrima. Now, Indrima is Nick's baby, but I am a major part of it. And I have no, I have no intention of calculating our next record. I intend of going in and just making the next record the way it will be made. You know what I'm saying? We've already got songs, some songs written. We've already got some songs recorded. And I am not even interested in talking about trying to make a move for the sake of sales not just want to make I just want it to be what it is you know as far as I'm getting on on into the business I'm still not a good businessman and I hate business and I I just really am not going to lick anybody's balls from for money I need the money but and and that's the thing that I don't like about the straight world because they do they like to wave it in your face I got the money you need it you know what are you gonna you know I can make you um I can make you big not me I'll ask for the money, but I'm going to retain my personal dignity. Um, I am. A couple more things, or at least one more thing. Um, lots on my mind. Uh, the other thing I want to share is this. Um, I do. I want to share this because it was a big session last night. Every now and then, I will do free counseling. And that's what it is, okay? I won't use the word therapy. That's what in essence it is, but I'll use the term counseling because that's less, less charged, okay? And um, someone got a hold of me last night and I said, okay, I'll go. I'm, I'm, I'm up for it because I'm just too uh, up to go to bed. And I just kind of want to share something I tried to share with this person that I know with my very being, there's a lot of truth in it. You know, nothing is absolute, but relationships and getting along with people is difficult for many people. Many people who do not recognize themselves or for whatever reason are not as in touch with liking and loving themselves struggle in the world with feeling worthwhile and feeling like you fit in. I think many of us struggle with it. I know that I have, and I, in ways I still do, but I have a philosophy that works. I have a worldview that works for me. One of the things I've learned that is mostly true, seemingly 100% true, but once again, I don't know anything for absolute. And anybody that tells you they know the absolute truth, run from that person as far as you can because they are the biggest asshole you have ever met in your life, okay? So what I'm saying is this. Much of relationships and what's going on between people is a reflection 
of what's coming out of us. A, a big part of life is a mirror. People mirror back, even, mostly unconsciously. They mirror back what you're putting out. And this is what I mean to a degree. Again, it's not 100%, but mostly true. A person that is insecure and unsure of himself on the inside, and it's showing somehow, people will re react to that. Some will attack you. Some will pity you. Many will ignore you. But one thing is for sure that it won't work in bringing you attention, the kind of attention that you want. We show people in many ways how we want them to treat us, even when we don't know it. So this is why this is powerful to know. We show people through our own behavior and how we present ourselves, how they treat us. And so you cannot make others love you, care about you, or value you. You cannot. If you have money, you can pay people to be your lackeys and butt kissers. If you're a pretty person or beautiful, you can manipulate people because they want you. But they just want you. They don't value you. It's a cliche, but it's the truth that beauty is only skin deep. I like it when I like I like seeing people's inner beauty. And some of the ugliest people on the outside are some of the most beautiful, and vice versa. And I, I just say these things strongly because of my age, struggling through civil rights, and and the uh, you know the seeming dismantling of racism in America. It's only uh, partially true. I know I've had to struggle greatly with self awareness, identity, and finding ways to make myself strong in this world. So I feel strongly about the words I'm trying to share to anyone that needs them, which is if you leave it up to other people to include you and make you feel worthwhile, uh, just kill yourself now because you will always be abused. The answer is not in others. The answer is within you. It's hard to see this reality because we live in such a shallow um, world that is all about perceptions and what we see. And if you can make the picture look right, then that's as far as the, the thing goes. And a lot of and quite a bit of life is running on face power, which is a lot of shallow fucked up people are running things, running game, ruining having fun, but also ruining people's lives. Like the person I'm thinking of, and probably many more folks, and thinking of myself, who's been greatly damaged by the popular jocks who were just evil fucking bastards, you know. I want to just share that I want to encourage this person and anyone else that needs this is to try to see through that. It's a ruse. It's, it's an illusion. And it's, it'll kill you. If you buy into it, those people, some of those people might be enjoying their lives, but inside, most of them are miserable or lost, or you wouldn't want to be them. You think you want to be them. Looks like they're winning, like Charlie Sheen. God forbid, I wouldn't want to be him for nothing, even with all his money. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't want to be him. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. Think about it. It's, you know. So I... I think that I think it's a message that need, is needed, and that's the other thing I'll say. I'm going to air some 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 general dirty laundry. I hope this pisses some people off. Yesterday I got another a a question. Obviously a new a new viewer. I'm over 2,100 viewers by the way, folks, and I'm about to approach my 1,000th video because I make so many. Thank you, folks. Um, 2,120 subscribers. Wow. Wow. I can't have a contest because I need, you know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't. I don't have the extra pocket to be, you know, I don't. I don't. Thank you, folks. Okay? Thank you. But I want to tell you this, you know. I, I try to speak clearly. I try to speak well. And I've always been somewhere between a retard and um, an idiot savant. Okay? That's how I see myself, because there's a lot that I miss, even now. 
there's sometimes that I'll be like, I'll, it'll be obvious and I'm, it's like I completely missed the boat, you know what I'm saying? And there'll be other things that it's like, hey, everybody, don't you see this? You know what I'm saying? But I want to say this, that I'm just going to say it from my experience. The black community does not actually value smart black boys. They say they do, but we get treated like shit. And I'm going to tell it like it is, okay? And it has a lot to do with why I said recently why I'm not that interested in hearing urban music because it reminds me of the reality of urban life, which is this. Now, this is just my experience, and so some of you will think it's distorted, but fucker, God damn it, that's what happened to me, and I know it's happened to a lot of people. As I was growing up, and it, and it became apparent that I was a shy, quiet, you know, brainy kid who was getting straight A's, I would get approached by some of the more popular kids and some of the jocks in the neighborhood who would, um, they'd start by being nice, ask for help with homework. Then the next thing that would happen is, because I'm shy and quiet, the next thing those fuckers would try to do is they'd try to turn me out. In other words, they'd try to say, oh, you must be gay, let me get some of that butt. Literally, very disrespectfully. And then if that doesn't work, then it got to the point of rape. Which I, which I, I'm a survivor, okay? I'm Aaron Dirty Laundry. This has a lot to do with, I do not give a fuck about a lot of the braggadocio that comes from urban hip-hop music. I know it's the music of the world now. It's not just black. It's the music of generations now, okay? But it has a lot to do with why in small doses I listen to that stuff, but mostly it reminds me of being around a type of person and mindset that I want nothing to do with. And it and that's is that an indictment in general on my community? Yes, it is, okay, because that's been my experience that on the one hand, the fake fuckers want to put me up if I play the game right. Oh, this is one of ours. He done this, he done that. He's so smart. But behind the scenes, everybody's trying to fuck me. And that's always and getting me to do their agenda. It's like, you're so good at this. We need you to do that. You know, I'm just telling it like it is. Okay. So, how do I want to end this? I want to end this by what I was saying before is... <clears throat> I want to encourage people to really be who you are, be individuals and see through the facade of most of modern day life. A lot of people who you think are winning and you're trying to be like, they're miserable fucks, okay? And the answer to your problems is never to be found outside of you. I know this to be true. Even when it seems like it is, if once you examine it more closely, you'll see that the seeds of the solution came from within you. This is a long video, but I wanted to get all this out. I've forgotten something I know I have, but this was what I was on my mind. I just want to encourage people to be yourself. Understand that three-fourths of what you've been taught is wrong. And that a lot of people who appear to be on it are absolutely not absolutely are not be well